Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. Hello, good afternoon. We're um, going to start back up. And for those of you remotely that are joining us, welcome back. This is Kelvin Sung. You may recall he's a professor from University of Washington, Bothell, a dynamic speaker, which you've already experienced. And now you'll find out the secrets to building one of the most popular games in history, Breakout. Let's welcome Kelvin Sung back. Okay, thank you. Thank you, John. Um, so, so uh, thank you, thank you for, uh, for, for, for staying uh, for this afternoon session. So what, what we want to do here is, um, you know, if, if you go look at game design books, they actually teach you how to start designing a game and all that. And that's, that's not what we're doing. What we're doing is we are going to, based on what we want to build and analyze that. Um, the, if, if the ultimate goal is to design teaching materials, this is the beginning that you identify an, an application and understand how you want to build it in this environment. Once you get that um, going, once you understand how to build that, then what you would do is you analyze the, um, uh, the concepts that you want to teach and then map that to an application. Okay, so, so what we're going to do is we're going to build the application first and if we can do that in, in fast enough time, then we'll look at how we can analyze um, concepts and, and map that to applications. So, so to, to, to do that, so what I'm going to do here is uh, if, if we look at the uh, a block breaker game and just put on our software uh, developer hat in terms of we, we all develop programs and then see what's involved in there. And this is what I'm doing. I am going to bring up my uh, block breaker game and um, play that game and see what actually happened is that um, there are my world and then there is my paddle and my paddle I can move and this guy behaves like those guys up there. These guys are the same and then I have a ball that's bouncing around. Okay, so and then, you know, this is what we're doing is we're taking somebody else's application and analyzing and see how we can implement that. Um, but but uh, in general, if you do this for yourself, we, we, we can talk about that. And so after that, you, you realize that this is what you have and I'll show you how I designed this, this, this game. And this is what I did. Um, we are at session three now. And I am going to bring up my, my uh, this, is, oh, this is where we're working from. And we're in section three and block breaker. I'm, I'm going to bring up my design now and you guys will laugh at me. This is my design. Uh, I feel like Einstein, you know, I write something down and then I have to keep it and then show people that this is how my brilliant ideas come by. Um, the reason I draw this thing by hand and all that is on purpose. I want to illustrate the point that you don't need to actually sit down and write a design document or anything to actually start working on this thing because these applications are really trivial to do. Um, in, in general, uh, let me show you, um, if, if we look at this in a slightly more, more uh, formal way, well, formal, slightly more more respectable. I'm not sure if this is a whole lot more respectable. Um, and this is what I actually did when I want to do this. And I want to show you what the first thing I started thinking. And the first thing I started thinking is the most um, dominant uh, object in my world. And I'm, I'm not thinking about anything else other than the dimension. When you want to implement an interactive game application, interactive graphics application, the first thing you think about is dimension. And, and in this case, I started looking at this one block I have and look at it. And then the nice thing about the capability of designing your own world dimension, remember, we can specify how big our world is, is that you are free to use anything that's convenient and do that. So notice that I look at this, I go like, huh, the ratio of this, I like it to be two, two to one. Okay, fine. So let's use that as my world unit. So I'll take the most dominant object in my world and define the, my world according to that object. For example, if I look at this room, I may start, if I need to design this room, I may start using the chair as my dimension because I know how many there are and it will give me a nice proportion based on this chair. So I'll say that's one unit and that's what I did. I say this is one unit. You, alternatively, you can say this is one unit and that's 0.5. Today I just feel like doing that, so this is one unit. So now I've defined the size of my, 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 my block, and then the next thing I start doing is that where should these guys be? And then I say, well, you know, they will be like around 45% to 90% height. 
So this is what you do before you start coding, right? So 45% to 90% height, this is where my block will be. And then based on that, I say lower left corner is zero, zero because it's convenient. If it's not convenient, one thing you can do is, for example, these guys can be minus one, minus one, where your object will, move, will be defined between zero to one. Uh, between zero, zero, and the rest. So what that means is that at the very border of your application, there'll be one unit that's outside, which is kind of nice. It gives you a border around your application. So you can do that without doing anything special other than defining this point position. Maybe you can try that at the end of, the, uh, of this whole thing. And then, so this is zero, zero, and then now I'm thinking that if this guy is of size two and um, start counting one, two, three, I will have 15 of this in 15 columns of this. That means that my world is, 30. So now I have an application that starts with 0, 0, width of 30. Notice that I don't have to worry about uh, Xbox or Zoom or anything. This is my application, and dimension will just be defined this way. So this is between 0 to 30, and then um, I have, um, th th so th that's, that, that's the first thing I'm, 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 I'm done. And then after that, I start looking at my hero. There's a dominant distributing object that's, that takes up most of the world, and then I want to look at the behavior of my hero, and in this case, I'm sorry to say that I'll be the hero. So I'll look at my behavior. So I'm, I'm looking at this thing, and for every hero we have, um, for the, the dominant object we have, is, um, you, can, you can look at it as its, its, its behavior and its appearance. Right? And then for appearance, you start looking at texture and all that fancy stuff way, way, way back. We just start by looking at appearance. The appearance is just, well, for a circle, it's a radius. So I'm looking at how big should this thing be, and then if you draw it and kind of have some sense of it, that's like a radius of 0.5 seems right. So radius of 0.5 is about the same size as the block. That seems okay. And, and then, so that's what I'm going to have. And then I'm going to define its behavior, say this guy is shoot out by the user, he bounces off the window, he breaks block. And these are important behavior because what's going on here is I've identified a class one object. Not only did I identify the class one object, I've identified the methods it needs to have. So what I can do is now I can implement this entire behavior without worrying about the rest of the game. Right? So, so if you identify each one of the objects you have, and this is really easy to do because of the games that were defined are so easy. And then you can map this to concept. Later on, we'll see how we can try to map this to concept. So now, now we have that. And then the next thing I'm going to worry about, now this is a little bit mathematics here, is that how fast should this guy be going? And then I look at my world and go like, the world is about 30 units. The world is 30 units big. And I'm, I have a pound ball that's moving here. And I have a stopwatch and go like one, two, three. That looks like about enough time to, for my ball to travel entire 30 units in about three seconds. So the speed is displacement over, um, displacement over time. So the displacement I have here is 30 units. Oh, actually, I have it here. But then it seems like writing is better. So I have 30 units to cover, and I have three seconds to cover my, my 30 units. So this is my speed. Then I start to wonder, realize that how often do I update myself? How often do I update? And I'm telling you that it's a system constant, that the update happens 40 times a second. So there's 40 updates, updates per second. And of course, seconds cancels out. So my speed is 30 divided by 120. That's the speed I want my, my object to be traveling at. Right? And this, I didn't put that out from the blue sky. I want my, my, my ball to travel across my window in about three, three seconds, um, in about three seconds time. So that's my speed. Now I'm ready. I can, I can start actually code this thing now. And what you want to do is kind of write this stuff on the side, and then you can start writing your code. And of course, if we were teaching students this thing, then you would start writing a design document and all that, um, which I never do. And the company I work for, we didn't do that either. We talked about some idea. That sounds cool. And we all went and just wrote it. Of course, it didn't work very well. But <laughs> OK. I told you which company I work with, you know, oh man, I'm bad mountain man. It was a great environment, it was so much fun. Um, and then I have my paddle here, and then uh, I'm looking at my paddle, I'm a, I'm a big loser here, I can't play pong very well, so I, my paddle needs to be very extra long, and then um, I want this thing to be slightly smaller, so, you know, and, and then this is a paddle. And then this guy has behavior, unlike the, 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 this decorating objects out here, they don't have behavior, they just have appearance. The behavior here, this guy is controlled by the user and bounces the ball, All right? So, so, so we're done. So now we have, well, actually, the, um, I think I have one more. Uh, I, 
the, the last one I should have here is that what, what is a block? You know, a block doesn't move and then um, it destroys by, by, by a ball. So, so what we have here is we identify all the objects we, we have, and then we define their interaction, and then we're, we're actually ready to implement. And then typically when I start implementing something like this, I start with the hero most interesting objects. Notice the way you start designing this application. You des you, I start from the most dominant one. Use that to define the coordinate system. Once the coordinate system is defined, you figure out the most dominant object. I usually call this guy the hero object. And then based on the hero object, we define its behavior. And then um, we, we define all the interaction between all these things. So that's it. So what we, we are, we are, we, what we can do now is we can start and implement this now. And let's, let, let's start. What we'll do is they will start with something that we have kind of um, worked with before. This is the simple circle library. And if we we've come in here, um, let's just start working from here. This is a simple circle library. So I'm in section 3B. OK, and I'm just going to open up this simple X and A. And if, if we look at the source code that's given to us here, we're seeing that it doesn't have a whole lot of, have a whole lot of things in there. What I have here is that I have a circle that I'm, I'm going to use this as a pointer. And this kind of helped me a little bit. And then what I have done is, lo and behold, I'm doing what I promised I would do in terms of I set up my world coordinates such that my lower, lower left corner is 0, 0, and then, the, um, and then my, 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 the application width is 30. And I have this thing that I call a point. I, I, I initialize it at 5, 2 with a radius of 1. That's kind of just like an indication of that my application is running uh, uh, for me. And then I have my update world. In, in my update world, what I'm doing here is that um, I let the user change um, whatever they want to do with the left thumbstick. Uh, the left thumbstick is mapped to uh, IJMK. So that's kind of annoying. It's not the, it's not the keyboard. It's not a uh, up, up, uh, down arrow key. So you know, if we compile this, we run, we're going to see our very, very boring uh, our very boring circle from before. So I'm going to compile this thing. I'm going to run this, and you know, I, and I can move this with my I J M K. And this is whole up. Uh, this is not interesting at all. And what I want to do now is I want to implement the behavior of my hero, and the beha behavior and appearance of my hero. And I'm going to um, introduce a new file here. And there are many many ways of doing that. The simplest way I found is um, th that this is what you tell your student to never do. I'm going to click on the, on a file. Type Control C and Control V. While I have another file, this 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 window right here behaves almost identically like your uh, like your Explorer, right? So now I have this file, and then if you double click on this file, you're going to get exactly the same thing as you had before. Are, are we all there? And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come in here and delete everything, because this I just need a template to start working from. And the the, the uh, I'm going to call this thing my uh, my ball class. Be careful that you are not working with the original game.cs. You're working with copy of game1.cs. OK, and then I'm going to change the file name here also. So you, you can rename the file into uh, something interesting. So I'm going to rename this into my ball class, ball.cs. The IDE really spoils you. This is like Emacs. You guys worked with Emacs before? No, this is like Emacs. Once you get into the IDE, you don't go out anymore. <laughs> then you start reading. Can I can I read my email through this? I want to read my email through this, right? Um, this that's that's. I don't use Emacs. I think Emacs users are are, are evil. So anyway, so um, the the nice thing about doing doing things this way is you cut and paste is that we have the entire template here, right? So this is the templates here is and uh, nice and all that. So here's my ball class. Um, I'll say something and then I won't do it. The, uh, the right thing to do is, if you think about it, is the ball is a circle. If the ball is a circle, we should subclass from the circle. OK, and then I'm not going to do that because um, supposedly some of this stuff is for CS1. Um, so, so anyway, so let's, let's assume we don't know that we can subclass. I'm going to create a circle. And then my circle is I'm just going to call it a circle. And um, so, so I'm, I'm, I'm creating a circle. And then my, my circle. Um, has um, well, I, I want to, to know that if it can die, so I'm going to call it. I'm going to give myself an expire, so the circle can expire. 
and and then so that that's kind of it because my 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 circle object has a velocity in there and then I can just use that. So after that, what I would do is that let's just um, start uh, providing ourselves with a uh, uh, constructor and all that. And um, notice that these are instance variable of my uh, ball class. And what I've done here is I forgot to type in private. Um, if you don't type, if you don't you don't provide it by default, they are all private. So anyway, so I'm going to have my constructor now. My constructor is public so that everybody can construct me. And um, I'm going to create my class ball. And um, I, I'd be mindful that the ball will appear where the paddle is. So during the construction, in, in the constructor, what I want to do here is I want to uh, let my user tell me where, where I should be constructed as. So I'm going to accept a, uh, I'm going to accept a parameter. And then I will uh, instantiate all my, all my variables. And then I'm going to um, creating, I'm going to create my circle. And I'm going to create my circle at a position where it's specified. And then I will have my design document beside me. And my design document will tell me that my circle's radius is 0 0.5. And um, the, uh, th this, this F tells it that treat the number as a float, not as a double. Right? Uh, if you don't say that, a lot of times um, the compiler will complain. So I, I'm going to, I, I've created, I've instantiated my circle. And after instantiating my circle, what I want to do is I want to set it. Um, so what this has done is instantiated my circle at this position with that radius. And then now I know that after my circle is created, because it's, it's going to be my, act as my, my ball, the central object there, it has a velocity. So I'm going to set its velocity. And here I'm just going to set its uh, velocity direction. And um, I, I will do this. I will, I will type in the x and y separately so we don't get too clustered. So here is my, my float. I'm going to set its uh, x velocity. And I want to do something random, because you, when you shoot this guy out, you want it to go randomly. You don't want to go in a well-defined direction. So I need random number. And that is why um, the random number is provided as part of the, of the base class, because Almost anything you want to do that's slightly interesting, you want to have some random access. So I'm going to go go into my I'm going to go into my, my base class X and A base dot I have random float function. Um, so I, I went to my base class, and these are our are, are, are static functions on, on the class, so that you can access it from anywhere you want. These are global functions, right? This is like backdoor global function. So here I'm going to go random float, and then what I can do is that. Um, this random number of random floats let you specify, gives you a random number with ranges, right? So if you want uh, just a simple random number, you just call it like that. If you want a random number between zero and some max number, you will call it that way. And then if we call it with a minus five, minus 0 0.5, 0 0.5 to 0 0.5, um, this will give you a random number between positive and negative 0 0.5. So, and, th and then I am going to get my, uh, y to be 1. So no, now I have a direction that's pointing upward, and then 0 0.5 to positive 0 0.5, that's where my ball will shoot out. And um, I will, I will uh, assign that to be my velocity direction. So this is just a direction. Um, this is my x, y. So, so now I have, I have my ball has a velocity going upward and kind of like in, a, in some, some random direction out there. And then I'm going to remember that I want my circle to have a speed and um, speed of um, 30F over 120F. You, in real life, you des define all this to be constants, right? I mean, this is crazy to actually type in numbers like that. And then I will say my circle should travel. Now I'm done. So if I just instantiate my circle, I'm going to get a random circle just shooting upward. And we can try that. So I'm going to save this. And then I'm going to come back to my game1.cs. So what we've done here is we basically coded the behavior we want from, from my circle. right? And what we want to do now is that we want to say that if I press the shoot button, I will shoot out my circle. And um, how, how would I do that? I'm going to go back into my game1.cs. I, I think I should wait a little bit. For those of you who are done, you can go back to game1.cs and shoot the circle out. Shoot the circle out from the point. We have a point. In the, we have a point in the main program. You can shoot circle from the main program. So, 
So I'm going to come into my game one now, and then what I will do here is that I'm going to pull in a, a new instance variable under the game one class. I'm going to call it ball, and then m ball. So that's, 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 that's the ball I have. And then knowing that by default, I don't have anything. The ball gets created when you do something interesting. So inside my initialization, I'm going to set the ball to a null pointer. So ball is initialized to null. Is this new or now? No. Now? You need to talk to some of my students. I don't speak the language well, so in class, students uh, give me a lot of hard time um, telling me that I pronounce things, I shouldn't say that I have a student here, uh, telling me that I'm pronouncing things wrong. So I'll say, yeah, this is now, they'll say it's new. And then, and then you know, it's, and my daughters do that also, pound and pound, pound, like a water pound. Yeah, and then how heavy are you pound? I'm getting it now, I'm, 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 I'm okay now. Oh man, my, my daughters love that. It's like, hey dad, you can't speak. Um, yes. We okay? Thank you. Somehow it doesn't like my flow. I don't know. I like it. <laughs> okay, so we, we are going to, um, what, what we have done is that we come to the game class, we create a ball, we, we, we de declare a ball object out here, and then during initialization, we set it to now. And then in, inside the update world, what we're going to do is we're going to check for a button A click. When you press the button A, what we will do is we will create a ball. And then it asks you for position. Where do you want to create your ball at? And what we're going to do is we're going to create it at my point. So this is a point that I can move around, and I'm going to create my ball at that position. right? And if you compile this, and, and it should run. So I'm going to compile and run now. And so here is my here is my app. And sorry, I'm blocking you. So you just want to check if a button is click. If it is, then you will instantiate a new a new uh, instantiate a new new ball and. Any of you got start, uh, your, has your ball bouncing around? Not bouncing around, flying around. I'm hoping some of you have that flying around. If you have it flying around, press A many times. And you're going to see many balls. What's going on? So if you, if you press, oh my god, look at that. Do we have balls flying now? <laughs> yes? You know, so, so, it's, it's, so I was wondering, OK, all these balls, who is holding the set? Right? Yeah, so it's, the library is holding the set. So then when, if later on, somewhere I want to refer to the M ball object, is it the most recent one? Yeah, okay. you, the, the one you have is the one that just got created. It's, it's a real cool. problem that they're flying all over the place. Right. Is there any way to yeah, we have get to, to the set? Right, right. Yeah, okay. we, we have to remove Sorry. it. <laughs> oh, this is space. It, how, it, how do you have to say it's just ball? It's not, it's not the... Um, oh, it's just to team it's it's not the base. It's just ball. Oh, just ball? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, ball. Oh, it's, it's a circle. Then it's X and A circle. Class. I'm sorry. It's a circle. Class. Yeah, yeah. We're creating a circle. Yeah. Yeah, throw. 
A one hour. Yeah. No, 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 no. This is a ball class. This is a circle class. Yeah. There are two oh. different classes. Hold on. Let me just look at one thing. I wonder if um, you have including you have included the. Uh, oh, no, no, this is fine. Oh, this should be circle. Oh, okay. yeah, that's the circle class. Yeah. Um, for, for if you are done with with this, um, let, let's let's have a little bit fun before we start fixing our problem. Let's let's bang the circle. Now we have a circle. We're shooting circle all over the place, right? Let's 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 bang. Oh no, we're going to only bang the last one. So let's let's come into the ball class. And um, if you remember the behavior of the ball that, that we we talk about. So if if you remember what we're talking about here, we want our ball to bounce off window. So what we're going to do now is in the ball class, we're going to have an update function. In that update function, we are going to uh, bound ourselves. So I'm going to come to the ball class here. And then I'm going to add in a function called update. So here, I'm going to have a public function called update. And in my, I'll, I'll type a little bit fast so that um, I, can, I can finish typing and come around and see how, how we're doing. In my update function, what I'm going to do here is I want to bound my circle so it bounces around within the bound of the application. So what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to say uh, during my, my, uh, my, my update function needs to have a type. It returns void. And then what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to say uh, col uh, bound, collide, bound collide status. status, And then this, uh, this status will be a uh, status between XNA base dot world dot clamp. I'm going to clamp my circle at the world bound. Let me. Uh, so I'm, I'm clamp, clamping my circle at the world bound. This is the, the code we have done before, and then I'm going to switch on. Make sure that make sure that my 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 circle stays in in there. So um, bound status dot uh, collide bottom. If I collide the bottom or if I collide with the uh, top, I'm going to switch my y direction. So I'm going to collide with bottom. And then I'm also going to collide with the top. So if, if I have, have bottom or top collision, what I want to do is I want to change my velocities. Um, my veloc my, my, I want to change my velocities y, y component. So this is, this is something we did before the, uh, before the break. Um, I'll break here. Otherwise, what I will do is that I'll check for a left and right. And for left and right, I will change the x direction. Velocity x, I'll negate the x velocity's direction. And that's what I need to do in update. Okay, so so wh wh when I want to update, I will either flip the uh, y direction or the x direction. And then what I will do is that I will call this update function from within my update world. And I will do that only if my ball exists. So here I'm going to say if now it's not equal to my ball, how, what I want to do is I want to tell the ball to update itself. Okay, now the ball will bounce within the bound, and then it will only get created uh, when, when we are ready. You have a question? Is there not some kind of container that we can add the ball to, and then it will just, its update will get called regularly? Um, that's a interesting, uh, that's, that's. Added the ball to the sprite batch, wouldn't it invoke update and draw automatically? Uh, sprite batch can can include the ball. Um, the now you you asked me a philosophical question. The, the short answer is no. The but then I am doing some of that work. Um, yeah, oh man. Every no no, it's a good question. Every time I talk about this thing, um, people ask me a question. I go, man, why did I design it that way? Um, because you worked that that way. That's a good question, and and if if people understand the question, how come I have to call this update every time? 
um, it, that's absolutely true. I shouldn't. And I'm doing some of the work in of update anyway because the, the fact that the circle can move around, I'm updating it. And here, uh, I'm, just, um, I'm just calling explicitly. So next version of library, um, I'll, I'll put this into the, uh, yeah, because I can't have that anyway, right? Because ball is not derived from primitive. If ball is derived from primitive, then I can do it that way. Okay, let's, let's not go there. So if we are confused, that's okay. We had a side sidetrack. Excellent question though. Um, but, then, but, but then what we, we can do here is that the ball now has an update function and then the update function is called inside game. And then if we compile this and run, we will see that you can shoot balls out and all over the place. And then, well, the, the last one will, uh, the, the last one you shoot will just bounce around uh, forever. And then if you shoot a lot of them, only the last one will bounce around because the other ones don't know that they belong to the ball. Okay, so th what's going on is this thing. I'm, I'm gonna bring up my, uh, the, the update here so you can, you can look at the update if you want to. There's the library and then here's your code. Your code has an object, this is ball and ball created a circle, this is the circle. Circle is actually owned by the library. So whenever you create an object, it's owned by the library. This guy is called a auto draw set. Everything in this set gets automatically redraw. Okay, now C sharp is a managed system. So what that means is that when I say, ball create another one, what happened is that my, I, sh I should draw my, this this way. My ball actually referred to an object that's created inside, inside the, the, the library. When I, when I allocate a new ball, what happened is that I just reassigned this, this pointer. This is my new, new circle. This is the new ball I've created. This guy is still in the set. That's why it's still being drawn. However, the behavior of this guy, uh, the behavior of, of this old guy, because there's no more reference from my code, I can't control it anymore and I'm controlling the one that I'm referring to currently. So for, for that reason, if you have more than one of these guys going, this is gone, man, this is memory leak. It's, it's still referred by the library. So what you need to do is when a, something is out of the bound that you don't need it anymore, you actually have to delete it explicitly. Okay, and, and that's what we're gonna do here, is that when you, when you want to create a new ball, instead of just creating a new one, you need to check if you have an existing one. If you have an existing one, you have to tell it to go away. Um, so, um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to tell the uh, old ball to go away. So I'm going to check if uh, now is not equal to M ball. What I'm going to do here is that I have to tell the ball to delete the draw circle. So, and that's a method we don't have yet. So I'm going to come out here and say M ball dot delete circle. And we'll go implement this method inside ball. And here I'm just going to, I, I just came over to the ball function and here I'm just going to delete the circle. And th this is how I delete the circle, public void delete circle. And then all I need to do is tell the circle to remove itself from the auto draw set. So this, this last function that I call it line 59 tells the circle to remove itself from this set. So it's not here anymore. So before you create a new ball, you tell the old one to remove itself from the set. Okay, now this is the price you pay for having things hap happening automatically. You create an object, you always draw itself, then when you don't want it to draw itself, you have to let it know. It kind of takes away the nice thing about C Sharp in terms of um, memory, memory management. We, uh, we kind of have to do, do a little bit of memory, memory management here. The good thing about this thing is, though, is that your students don't need to know anything about this. So if we compile this and run, what we're going to have is we're going to have my, 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 my circle now. And then when I shoot it, there, I only have one of these guys instead of having many, many one of these. Because I always remove the uh, existing ones. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show the update function and I, I walk around a little bit for those of you who are trying to, to follow and got a little bit stuck. 
I wonder if, if I can help. Yeah. So if you if you are not planning to, I mean, so if there is no requirement that we need to deviate the ball. Yeah. I mean, so multiple of them can exist. Yes. You need to maintain some structure. Absolutely, you have to have a list of looking at all of them. Otherwise, you will lose track of them. Oh, because you're not calling the update function. You have to call the update function. So if you go to game1.cs in update. Oh, you are. You're calling the update function. No, you're always setting it to now here. You don't want to do that. This should be initialized work. Yes, you want to initialize that. You OK? Okay. Are you okay? Yeah. Okay. So, so what we have here is actually we have we have this ball bouncing in our environment, and then we want to know that when the when the um, ball collided with the bottom, right here, the first first condition, we, we, sh we, we when when that happened, we just want the ball to go away. So when when that happened, what we would we, we want to do is we actually want to just delete the ball, delete the circle. I mean, so I'm in the in the ball class right now, and then th there's one special case um, for the uh, for the delete for the delete circle um, for for the bouncing is that if I touch the bottom. I just want I want the uh, I want the uh, the ball to go away. So so what I, what I have right now is that every 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 um, every one of the uh, every one of the um, the sides are are fair play uh, except the bottom. If you touch the bottom, um, the circle will just go away. So that's an indication for us that the circle has died. And in in the in the block breaker game, that's exactly what you want. Um, and there we have it. We have we have the uh, we have the behavior of the ball. And if if you remember the our the, when we when we start working with the ball and say how the ball should behave, that's all we say that you will bounce around from the side. If he touches the bottom, he dies. And then one more behavior we don't have is the interaction of the ball with the rest of the object with the paddle, right? So so that is some, one thing one thing we don't have. And then that's what we're going to code next. Do do we have a bouncing ball? If you don't, you're not going to let me know, right? Are we okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So, so what we're going to do now is that now that we have the ball class, we, what we will do is that we let's let's define the paddle class, and instead of trying to work salvage what you have d done so far, let's work with the next version of the code so that you don't have to work with what you have done so far. What, I hope what you have done so far is you see that you have a ball bouncing in the environment. And then let's go to the next uh, source code. So what we have done is that we have implemented a ball class, and we are going to implement a block and paddle class. Okay? And then after the block and paddle class, then uh, we are basically done. So just bear with me. We have two more examples, and then we have the block breaker game. That's all we have. We have like three objects. We define our world. We have the world and, and the ball. Now we can get the block and paddle working. Then we're we are good. So I'm going to take this away, and then I am going to go to my source code, and we are done with B. Uh, when we're done with C here, this is the the ball class we have. Uh, we are we are the next one we want to go to is we want to come and look at the um, um, block and paddle class, and um, what we want to do though is that we will open up source code for C, and start from C. We are building towards D. So if you open up source code uh, at C, and you, if you open that up, what you'll have is you'll have a ball class. And it looks uh, uh, very similar to what we have done, except that it's, it's a little bit prettier because we have our radius, we have our speed, and then it has an expire, it has a count. And then if you look at the code, it's, it's the same thing as what we've, we have done before. The only thing that's slightly different is my ball has a more beautiful color than what we've seen. I gave you a label. Also, that's slightly interesting is that I gave some randomness to the ball I'm shooting out, about 30% randomness. So it doesn't cover the, the a region in three seconds exactly. 
uh, there's a, you know, it's somewhere between two to four seconds um, so, that, so that we have some randomness in the system. So, so here's my ball class, and um, you know, it knows how, how to count itself. It, it can let you have access to its velocity. It tells you where it is, and then um, it, it, it tells you its radius. And then if you look at the update function, that was the, time, that was the function that we kind of spent a little bit of time in there, we see that um, it has an expired flag. It tells itself that it has expired. And then um, for the expired, uh, what, what we do is that we will remove it from the draw set. Well, that's it. There's nothing interesting, and then you can you can delete the ball, and we've seen that working. And if you just compile this source code that we just open up and run this, so what you have is um, I'm going to run it now. It's exactly what we we saw just now. The behavior in terms of so you can shoot this guy up. Uh, they're they're in red color, and if they reach the bottom, they they go away. So what we want to do now is to we want to include uh, paddles for for this. Um, so that we can bounce this ball. Actually, even before we do that, if we want to just bounce this ball around, bounce this ball around right this time, this is our paddle. We can use this as our paddle, right? So how, how do we do that? Um, let's just see this uh, working. So what, what we can do here is that we come into update. I'm going to come into update um, into the game1.cs. That's my main, main loop place. In my game1.cs, I'm going to keep my initialized world closed for now inside the update world, um, we can manipulate the pointers. So I define regions so that we can hide the code that we don't want to look at. I can, manu I can manipulate the pointer. The pointer is just changing the center of my circle that, that's called endpoint. That's fine. And then here's my ball's behavior. If we look at the ball behavior, um, nothing spectacular. We've seen this before. If you click the button A, I will, if the ball already exists, I'll tell the ball to go away and create a new one and count. And then I will also say if the ball is now now, if the ball exists, I will update it. If it has expired, I will just delete it. So you know this, this are the, uh, uh, these are the uh, behavior we've seen before. And then I print messages out from here. These are some messages I can print out for the user. So what I'm going to do here is that I'm just going to add in a couple of lines of code to, to give the ball some behavior here. So I'm, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say if my point, this is the point, Collided with C O L L collided with my M ball dot get circle. So if if my point, this is the, the, the point I have, if that collide with my circle inside the ball, and I know that there's syntax error because we don't have that function yet, the get circle function. If there's a collision, what I want to do is I want to change the I want to change the ball's direction. Just bounce it upward. So I'm going to say m ball dot velocity. Okay. Because of syntax error, it will it will not it will not uh, let me. The intelligence is messed up. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the ball class and, and define this get circle function so we can work with that. So I, I'm going to come back to the ball class and just give it, uh, define the get circle function. And the get circle function is a right here. I'm going to say public um, x and a circle. This function will return a circle. And it will just return the reference to the circle that I have. So I'm going to re just return that. I'm just going to return that circle. So that's done in the ball class. So the ball now lets, lets, the, uh, lets, the, uh, lets the rest of the world see the circle. Yeah? Really? Get circle? You know, the problem with uh, intelligence is that you don't notice these things anymore because it can just go all over the place. And after a while, you don't know how to spell circle anymore. Uh, I have a I've, I've real problem with that. I didn't know how to spell circle to begin with. No, I really don't. So, so now what I can do is that I can come out here and change the ball's velocity. And so here I have my, my ball. I can get at this velocity. I'm going to flip its velocity. Don't tell me that, please. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm, I'm flipping the ball's velocity. Man, this is, um, I'm doing real-time programming here, and, and uh, I shouldn't. I, I thought I can just show you something for fun very fast. Um, in order to do this, what, what we need to do is that we need to get, get an instance of it and then flip the value and then sign it back again. So this is what we need to do. Um, I'm really sorry that I did this. So I'm going to get a, get a, get the uh, get a, get a, get the, uh, uh, Get a, get a get an instance of the uh, of the velocity, and then assign it. And now now what happened is you can use the point as a collider to actually bounce the ball up. It's going to go away on its own. Because it will be garbage collected. As long as there's no reference to it, 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 will, it will be gone. To switch from C++ or C to this was very difficult. It's like, man, did, did, should I create an instance of this? Or am I OK? I always have a problem with that. Uh, but what we can do now is that we can actually start bouncing the, oh, what happened? Why is it no pointer? Oh, thank you very much. M ball may not be defined. M ball needs to be shot. So if I want to use it, I have to check. If now is equal to M ball, if not equal to, then I will shoot the, uh, I don't even need. If it's not equal, now if not equal to M ball, then I can shoot my, I can shoot my, uh, I can do the, uh, I can do the collision. The, uh, the IDE really helps you in terms of formatting and all that. You get into this really bad habit of not formatting yourself. So, so what, what we can do now is we can shoot one of these guys and then, hey, what's going on? So I, you know, I can bounce it, but then I can, I, can, I can bounce it and you can start playing this pawn game now. Um, but then when I shoot, what's going on? Because they're overlapping. Yeah. Look at that. Is that like a bug? Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. It, it, it is. It is. Um, I was trying to solve this problem in the library, and then I realized I don't know what the user wants. You can't. You can't decide user's behavior. But then um, I also realized that that's a really good bug to show the student and explain to them that hey, you want to be careful because I'm creating my circle inside the ball. After I create it and I start colliding immediately, there is collision. And when there's collision, I change its Y component, so the ball starts bouncing around. And if you're not lucky, it's going to stay there forever. It's nice that we have X direction velocity, so it moves away. Otherwise, it's just going to stay there forever. Right? So now we have, we have to solve that problem. But in any case, um, at, at this point, we, we, we have like a slightly um, not really fun, um, but it's like a, it's like a so anyway, so so we, we have we have something working, and and um, what we want to do now is we want to replace this this functionality here with a paddle. Are there any questions or anything? Anything I can help with? So if we want to create a paddle, the, the thing that we notice is that the, a paddle is just a block. A paddle is just a block, uh, a block that can't move. So what I want to do now is that um, I want to create my, my block. I want to create my paddle as a subclass from block. So um, I'm going to copy the ball class and do the trick again, and then this is my copy of of, of ball, I'm going to call this my uh, block. 
and I'm going to create a block class now. Then this is my new block class, and I'm going to delete everything in between, and then um, I'm going to delete everything between. Here's my ball class. I don't want it anymore. And then I am going to de de define the behavior for my block. And what my block is is nothing other than a rectangle. So inside my block, I'm going to create a X and A rectangle. So inside my block, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to raise this to the top so we can see it. Um, in the block class, I'm going to create something called rectangle. And then I will have a instantiate I have a constructor for my for my block. And um, block because I want to put them everywhere in the world. So in its constructor, I will have um, I will have its x and y value. I'll, I'll have its x and y. Uh, 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 it, I will let it specify position. And then in, inside here, all I do is I'm going to I instantiate my my instance variable. Um, th that that is my uh, that is my rectangle. And what I'm doing here is that I'm going to figure out my rectangle's position. My rectangle's position is defined by the, um, so this, in the constructor, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to define my x, y position for my, for my rectangle. That will tell me where the center is. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to specify the width and the height of the rectangle. So this rectangle's constructor let me specify the center, the width, and the height. And if you remember, the width and the height were the central piece of our entire uh, uh, coordinate system. And width is of size 2, height is 1. So here I'm just going to specify 2 and 1. So that's kind of easy. So that's wh what my rectangle is. That's what my blocks are. And since my block don't move, I don't need to do anything else. I just instantiate a rectangle. And, and blocks, all it does is that it knows how to interact with my, with my ball. So um, what the, a block needs to do is that it, I have a public, uh, it, it will collide with ball. This is the main thing that a block needs to do, collide with ball. And um, a ball, I will pass in a ball B, and then the block will know how to collide with it. And it will return a Boolean telling me if a collision indeed happened. The reason why there's a red underline is because the IDE complains that I'm not returning anything. Not yet, at least. OK, and, and then now I want to implement collide with ball. And then luckily, the, the uh, collision is very simple because all I need to do is that I will collide my, um, I, I will collide my rectangle with a circle. And then those guys know how to collide with each other. So I'm going to declare a Boolean variable to remember the status, the hit status. I'm going to say hit, and that is the same as uh, that's the result of having my rectangle collided with my ball's circle. So I'm going to get the circle out here. And that's my hit status, whether there's a real collision. OK? And then one, one other thing I want to do that's slightly detailed is that, is, is, is that, um, is, is that the, the, um, if my circle hits my block on the side, I want it to bounce this way. If my circle hits the block from the bottom, I want, to, I want it to, so if I'm, my circle hits the block from the bottom, I want to refract this way. And if my circle reflect, hits the block on the side, so basically I want my circle to behave differently depends on how it hits the uh, block, right? Otherwise, you have a block breaker game that's kind of not, not, not a whole lot of fun because you can't collide it from the side. So I want to do a side collect, 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 collision. And this is what I'm doing. I'm going to get, get a reference to my circle. I should have done that earlier, but then uh, pardon me. So I'm going to get a, a, um, I'm going to get a local variable that points to my actual um, 
the, I'm going to get a circle because my circle is going to interact with my rectangle very often now. So I'm going to get an instance of that. And then I want to check where, how did I collide with the, uh, how, how am I colliding with the block. So I'm going to say if indeed I hit the block, then I want to test. So if my circle, my circle touched my rectangle, then I'm going to check whether this type of situation is happening. And if it is, I want to react accordingly. So how do I check that? So if there is a collision, I'm going to say, I'm going to check if my circle, which C in this case, is to the right of the rectangle. So if my circle is the, on the right side of my rectangle, I'm checking this condition. If my circle is on the right side of my rectangle, what I want to do is that I want to detect if this is happening. If this is happening, I want my reflection to go in this direction. And what I would need to do is I would need to flip the x component of the velocity. So I'm going to check. If I am on the right side of the rectangle and my circle's velocity, um, in the x, x, velocity x is pointing towards the, oh my god, think about this, and pointing towards the left. So if it's less than zero, then what I want to do is I want to flip the circle's velocity. So I want to flip that. So th there, are, there are conditions you need to check so that you can collide with the block from the side so that things look cooler. And else, the reverse is, else I can check the reverse. If my cir cir circle is on towards the left of my, of my rectangle and my velocity, if, if I'm approaching the left and my velocity is towards the positive x direction and my, velocities of, my x velocity is greater than zero, then what I want to do is I want to flip my x velocity again. So this is the only tricky, uh, these are the only tricky lines for block that I want to be able to handle the ball colliding on from the side. If you don't have that in your code, um, the block breaker game still works. It just looks a little bit weird. And then finally, if, if, um, if I'm not on the left or not on the right, um, then I'm just going to shut my eyes and flip my Y direction. And then I, I will tell what happened to me, to whoever caused me. So one option I think I can do is I will just present this stuff. Isn't that a whole lot more boring if I just say this? So what I have, what, what we have done here is we have defined a block class that knows how to collide with the ball. Not only does it know how to collide with the ball, it knows how to tell the ball how to behave after the collision because we're messing around with the ball's velocity. And we will tell, we will tell ourselves the collision status afterwards. Yes? Just to be one of those troublesome students. So if we have a collision, yeah. And the circle is to the right of the block. Uh -huh. Could there ever be a case where the velocity of the circle is not less than zero? Oh, you know, if this were in the physical world, it, it will not. But then th this, this kind of things can happen. Um, and by the way, these are great. What happens when students ask this type of question is you talk about stuff you like to talk about, and then you don't teach them the stuff they need to know. Um, so the, the, this is where the circle is towards the right of the block. 
okay, notice that, that there's some collision. And then um, the circle can be traveling in any direction at this point. You know, it, and this can happen because we work, we work in a discretized world because the circle's position may be out here. In the previous update, this guy was traveling really fast. In the next update, you, you, you got to here. Or the circle can be um, like, like, like um, so in this case, you do want to bounce off that way. But then if the circle were, were out here before and in one update it comes out to here. Now if this collision happened and you bounce off that way, then that doesn't look right, right? So, so you, 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 you want to, you, you know, that oh, the circle can come in any direction. It's a real problem. That's why, um, okay, so, so if, we, if we're okay with collide with, with, the, with the ball, and um, anyway, uh, and then, so what I want to do now is that our block is actually done. I mean, that's, that's all we want to do with the block. The block doesn't move, and then it just collide with the ball, and that's, that's all we care. And then what the, the next thing we want to do here is that we want to define the paddle class so that we can actually uh, uh, paddle the, the ball around. So I'm going to copy the block function and pay, uh, the paste block. What I did was I just copy and paste block. Okay? And then I'm going to work with the block class. Now I'm going to call this my, uh, I'm going to call this my, my paddle class. And my paddle class will be a subclass of block. I think I, I, I made a mistake somewhere. My, my paddle class is a subclass of block. And then I'm going to delete everything in this, in this file so that I will, I, I will define a new behavior for my paddle because paddle's behavior is slightly different from the block. So now I have a new uh, clean, clean, clean file to work with. And I think is this is my block. Oh, I didn't save it, that's all. And that's my ball class. Okay, that's good. So here's my paddle class. My paddle class, I will subclass from the block, and then, um, and, and then um, I, I don't have any instance variable because my, my behavior depends on that rectangle that's in the block. So I don't need to have anything special here. All I need to have is some behavior that's slightly uh, different from my parent. So I'm going to have a instance, I'm going to have a constructor here. Now the paddle is unlike a block, you don't create those things on the fly. You only have one of those things. So the, the paddles, um, the, the paddles uh, constructor doesn't need to have, we, the, the paddles constructor, we do not need to have a, uh, we do not need to have a uh, parameter. And then what we're going to do is that we're going to call our base class constructor. And our base class constructor is a block. And block constructor expects you to tell, tell you where it is. And I'm going to create my paddle in the middle of the screen. And then um, the height. My paddle is like, you know, somewhere, I don't know. I'm going to give it like 0 0.5, 0 0.8 above the bottom. So this is the, the, the location of my paddle. So my paddle is a block. And then what else I'm going to do here is that I'm going to, after I, 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 uh, after I create this thing, I'm going to make my paddle slightly bigger and slightly uh, narrow, slightly uh, bigger, longer and narrower. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change its width to, I think I want it to be five, and I want to change its height. Oh, the width and height is on the rectangle. So I'm going to change the, the rectangle's width and the rectangle's height to be 0 0.8. Um, one thing <laughs> is um, the block needs to let the, let the paddle see the rectangle. So this guy right here must be protected, not private. So the paddle can actually see the... Uh, the paddle can actually see the, 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 the rectangle. <coughs> and the paddle can move. So I'm going to come out here and def define a function void so the, the paddle can move. And the paddle will move by according to user's command so it will have a input parameter x so that I can change the paddle's um, center position. So the paddle's behavior is that it will move in the x direction, and I will let the rectangle. I'll change the rectangle's center position accordingly.
And I'm actually done. Now we can have a paddle that I can bounce the ball around. It looks kind of weird, but it works. So I'm compiling here, and um, I will run my program. And, and of course, you'll see that it doesn't work uh, because I don't have a paddle. Where's my paddle? I didn't create it. So I'm going to come into my, my main function. I'm going to create my paddle. So here is my paddle. Um, I'm in my instance variable. I'm going to create a paddle, P-A-D-D-L-E, paddle. I'm going to call it M paddle. And then I will instantiate it during initialization work in, in the world initialization. So here I'm going to go M paddle. Wait, M paddle. Get new paddle. So I've created a paddle for myself. Yeah. In the your previous iteration of this, you had a big circle down there, and that yes. was your MPT. Yeah. So can't you reuse that instance variable and then just bind it? You know, in, instead of having now both endpoint yeah. and your paddle. Yeah, it's still here. The, the endpoint is a circle. My paddle is a rectangle. Yeah, that's what I should no, do. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I can. You're saying that I should just delete this guy. Because you wrote a lot of the logic based on endpoint that you want to translate. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, let's do that. So, so this is what Bob's suggesting. That now I've instantiated my paddle, and then I will come down to the code. Go, oh, right, right here. This is this is the place where I'm colliding my my uh, my point with my paddle and my point with my my ball, and I can just do it right here, right? The thing, though, is that um, my paddle is a whole lot smaller than this uh, circle, right? Because what my paddle knows how to do is my paddle is a block that knows how to collide with the circle. So, you know, so I have more sophisticated behavior, man. So I can do uh, my m paddle dot collide with ball. How about that? Um, ball, oh, sorry. So I'm colliding with the ball, actually, right? How cool is that? Um, so if, if the ball is there, and I'll collide with it, and um, what if I collide with it? I don't really care. If I collide with it, I'm fine. Because the, my, my collision function is so smart that it will actually flip the ball direction for me. So that, that's, that's all I need to do. Now I can actually do something uh, uh, smart. right? So I can shoot out the ball. My paddle can, can, actually, uh, can actually bounce the ball for me. So if we come out here, and then, oh, look at that. Um, I can't move my paddle, man, because I forgot. Um, so what I need to do, of course, is that I have to say uh, my paddle, and paddle dot, uh, I can say dot move, move by what? Let move, let's move it with our right, right thumbstick. So I'm going to move this with my uh, gamepad, dot um, a thumbstick, dot right. I'm going to use the X movement to move my, my paddle. So now, now, I, now I can do this thing. Ooh, it moves. I can use the, the left uh, thumbstick to move my ball, and this is the shooting point. And then boom, I can shoot the circle. And then when the circle comes around, I can bounce it with my uh, paddle. Ooh, I can do this all day. That's <laughs> yeah, not funny. Um, so so um, hey, let me show you this. So we can let the ball go away, and then it behaves properly. That's kind of cool. And here's, here's, what, here's the problem. Um, I'm going to shoot the ball out not from this, this, this point. It doesn't make sense. I'm going to shoot the ball out from my, from my paddle here, right? So I'm, I'm going to come in here, and the, uh, the behavior is such that um, I just opened up the ball behavior, is that if you press your button A here, if ball is not new, I'll, I'll create one. If the ball is new, I'll create a new ball, and the new ball position should come from my paddle. Um, my paddle, oh, this is the part where um, I'm going to get the position of the paddle. Hey, notice that I, when I inherited my paddle, um, I didn't say how I'm inheriting it. So it's inheriting as a, as a private. So what I need to do is I think I need to do this. So I, I, what I've, oh, no. Oh, pop. I need to make my paddle class public or else I can't get access to the block. Because what I want to do here is that I need to get my, uh, 
Okay, now I'm stuck. Uh, what what I want to do is I want to get the blocks position so that I can I can shoot ball. Now what can I get at the position? Somebody knows C sharp here? So you just want to access or block? Yeah, I want to access blocks. And I thought what I need to do is I need to make my inherit when I'm inheriting block, I need to Oh, oh, okay, okay, thank you. Okay, there we go. So block needs to be public. So that's the problem. So, so at this point, I can access the, pos uh, okay, hold on, hold on. Okay, so what, what, what are we missing here? I should be able to get access to the blocks. Um, I think it's in the title that CS unit Oh no, there's not. It's not defining here. I need to get the block's position. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So block needs to needs to be able to return its position so that we can actually get access to it. Um, I'll, I'll return it from the paddle. So paddle will, will return position. So here, what I can do is I'll return a position of public uh, vector two, and I will return its position so that I can create um, I can create the the ball, and this guy will return the position of the uh, rectangle. Center. So no, now I can, um, in my game, when I want, I can get the block's position. This is impossible to follow, isn't it? No. Um, Oh no 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 no! You, you, no no no! No, I'm I'm saying for people in this in this room, if you're CS one, this this is way out of way out of uh, you, you won't you will not, will not be doing any of this. Um. We, what we want to do here is we want to collide. Uh, hold on, sorry. I, I am inside my. Uh, I'm inside the. Uh, when the, the A button is click, I want to uh, bounce the. Uh, I want to bounce the ball. I, I want to create a new ball, and then based on the paddle position, and, and we have that. And I think the it's it's wait so. This this is what it's complaining about that you have if no access to this. I think did I make ball public? I I, I keep on forgetting to make my classes public, and and then when when it gets passed around, um, it, it it gets confused. So now I'm going to shoot my ball out from the from the paddle, and then we we can see that it gets stuck in the paddle, and we know that. We know that 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 the problem with that is because of the uh, is because of the uh, the it's because of the overlapping in collision. So so you know if if you if you uh, if you run this well, if, whenever you try to create a ball, it gets stuck in the paddle, and sometimes it goes up, sometimes it doesn't. So what that means is that during collision, besides figuring out where 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 the objects collide. For paddle, at least, we're interested in knowing that the ball is not inside the paddle. The ball should never be inside the paddle. Okay. So, so what what we, we do is that for the for the paddle collision, um, we we define a new function for paddle, and we can call this function public, and then um, we we can public void. So for paddles collision with ball, we're going to call collide with ball. So paddle knows how to collide with ball also. And in Paddle's case, what you will do is you will test see, to see if you are, you are hitting the, um, 
to see if you're hitting with the ball by calling the base classes collide. So we'll call the base class collide with ball. If there is a collision for paddle, we need to do something special. If there is a collision um, for paddle, what we want to do is we want to push the ball outside of the paddle. Right? So, so what we can do here is that I'm going to get an instance of the, I'm going to get a circle. The, I'm going to get a circle from, from, the, uh, from the ball. So what I want to do is that if the paddle and the circle collide, what I want to do is I want, pu I want to push the circle outside of the paddle, literally push it out. Yes? When you start it up, why not just start it a little bit higher in the first place? Because it doesn't just happen when you start it up. Because what's, what's happened in, in, um, in the discretized world, this happens all the time. If your ball is traveling down this direction, and then, well, we can try that. If, if the ball is traveling down in this direction, and then if my paddle, you know, if I'm out here in, in one update, and then by the next update, if that happens, sometimes the ball gets stuck. But then, no, that's a good point. So we, we can try that. So um, if, we, if we just return my base class, So instead of ret returning the center position, this is what um, we're suggesting. Sorry, I'm sorry. We're going to get my um, plus my height divided by 2, F. Oh, I, I, I guess, um, yeah, I, I, I can't be too lazy. Um, I, I'm just going to uh, compute the y position so that um, it's right on top of the rectangle. So here I'm going to add my right y position by, 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 the, by the height divided by 2. And I'll return the I'll return this p. So what this is is that as suggested, when you press the A button, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look at the paddle. I'm going to look at the center position, and that's what this is. That's the center position. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to push the y value up by the height divided by two. And I guess I need to actually know the circle. So I'm going to return this position. And that won't work either because what's going to happen is now the circle will be created right here. So it's still going to be overlap. So if, 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 I, uh, if, I, if I cheat a whole lot, this is cheating a little bit because I know the circle's radius. So if I, if I come out here and go p dot y uh, plus equals to 0 0.5, that's the circle's radius. Now that's going to push it all out. And, and then and, um, this will work now. I didn't push it far enough. Almost. Rectangle's height divided by 2. Oh, I wonder what's going on. Why, why, why is that not, not enough? Uh, now, now we're really hacking. Now, now this will work. Hey, there we go. It works now. Um, but then if you hit the, the circle at the right angle, you're going you're to see the circle getting stuck again just like uh, this situation ha can happen. Well, um, it did? Oh, that's why I quit. You cut around the corner. Yeah. Oh, we can try to let make it happen again, but then we all know it can happen. So we won't, we won't oh, there we go. So, so that can happen. That's why you want to kind of push it out and make sure that, that, that um, it, it, doesn't, um, it doesn't actually happen. Um, the, um, and and I'll, 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 I'll save the code for that. Um, the, the next thing we can do is, and I, I won't do that anymore. So for some reason, something's not going right uh, here. Um, 
Usually this thing goes slightly smoother than this. I really apologize. Yes. So the, the collision with the collide with the ball for yes. the parameters. Yes. Is it different for a watch? See, the, what we want to do is that the, the behavior is slightly different in terms of the paddle and the after the collision, the paddle is still alive. Versus the block, the, once the block touches the, 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 the ball, it goes away. So whether after the, the behavior afterwards, you don't care. That is why the paddle will actually have a different behavior. That is why here, after the collision, you want to make sure that the ball doesn't uh, overlap the paddle anymore. So that's what I was going to put in the code here. Um, I will not test your, 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 your patience. Um, so what I'll do next is I won't, I won't just uh, go through this code and type all these things out. Um, I, I will just tell you what, what happened next. Like I said, I apologize. I, I'm not sure why, why this is not going smooth as it should be. Um, but, but then, and it happened in classroom also, and let's pretend it's just a really bad class. The important thing I hope that you will walk away is that this, to work with um, game type situation, you want to create your object and you want to update the state. The engine should be somehow just calling your update and if the engine is slightly more sophisticated, you will call your draw function also. So it's initialize update draw. It always works that way. Okay, and then if, if you have that in your mind, remember when you want to see something moving, don't write a for loop around it or don't write a while loop around it. That's something that's very difficult for me in the beginning. Just let it happen because you will. So update things incrementally. So if, if we're okay with that, the, the afternoon session, the past one and a half hour that seemed like five years, is that I'm trying to explain to you that when you want to write a simple graphics application, draw it out on the paper first. Figure out the dominant object, define your coordinate space based on that dominant object. It makes a world a whole lot easier. Okay? And then typically, because we're not doing very sophisticated uh, uh, graphics programming, we typically have a central object that's dominating, that's our hero, interacts with a, a bunch of supporting things. Implement, define that, that central object first like we're doing for our ball. And typically it's not very difficult. So implement that object, define that object, implement that object, and then define, that's what we're doing, that seems like the past four years we're doing this thing. Define the, 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 the paddle that to interact with. And then when you have that working, your application basically works. And that's what we have here. It's, it's limping along, but it basically works. The next thing we want to do is that if you, you, will, you will believe me, that block is actually there, that you can interact with the ball. We actually see that it knows how to interact with the ball. All we need now is to have an array. We need to have an array to put blocks out here. And because we did so, so carefully that the blocks, there are 15 positions of this thing. And then the first position is 0 0.5, is, is, is position 1, 2, 3, Four, there, you know, this is 15 of this thing because we define these guys so carefully. So we just go through a two-dimensional array and lay these guys out, and we are done. So let me show you the code for that, and then um, we don't have to suffer through this. And if you will, you will still let me speak, I will tell you um, a little bit more about um, how we uh, we design assignments around these this, this, this things. So what we have here is I'm, I'm compiling this thing, and I'm running, and then, oh, sorry, I, I started the wrong one. This is the one that we're building. So I'm going to come out a set of blocks, and we can see that all we need is a set of these guys. And so I'm compiling a set of blocks and run it, and that's what we have. So instead of just creating the blocks all the time, I have a random number, say, between 0 to 8. If the number is, um, is, is between 0 to 8, I will create a block. If the number I got is big, big, bigger than 0 0.8, I won't create a block. So I get a random number between uh, 0 to 1, and if the number is less than 0 0.8, I will create a block. 80% of the time, the blocks are created. That's why we have this, right? So every time when I regenerate this, I will get a different set. And then um, what I can do now is I can move my paddle, and then the paddle will just interact with um, each one of the, the... There's no new functionality here. All I have is I go through an array of this stuff, okay? Um, so this is, the, uh, this is the, the last part. And at this point, what we have, uh, I want to say that this is your block breaker game. So we are almost there. And I don't want to try my luck uh, giving you the last class. That I, I'll show you the code a little bit. 
to, to show you, indeed, it's really, really, really trivial. And then it'll work on the keyboard or the app. Yeah, yeah. So at this point, um, because th this is running from our library, I can move this thing. I can, you know, and I can I can shoot the ball out. And and I think B will recreate it. Yeah. Because we are updating this thing every. Um, we, I I can recreate anytime I want. And students always ask me that this is not fun because uh, you can never lose. And I'm thinking, yeah, you know, I'm not writing this for fun. I just want to see if I can do this. Um, uh, th this is the code that I want to show. Uh, we, <laughs> we didn't write. Um, this is the code that we didn't write. And this is the block probability where we don't we want to create. Um, it's 70% uh, of the time we want to create. And here is the data structure of all the blocks I have. And then when I want to initialize the block, the first thing I do is I will delete all the ones before, making sure that they're not in the draw set anymore. And then I will create a new one. And to create a new one, like I said, I'm, I'm going from 0 to 15 in the horizontal direction. I'm going to, from 0 to 7 in the vertical direction. And then here I'm computing the coordinate position of my block. It's um, c times 2 plus 0 0.5. That tells me where my blocks are. And um, this tells me the y position is offset by 8. So it's not at the very bottom. right? And then after you create them, you put it into the set. And then when the block when the, the block set knows how to interact with the ball, so the break blocks, the, the, the update function will call this break block. And all we do is we do a linear search through my array colliding with the ball. If there is a collision, I delete it. And because whenever a block collides, I can delete it. I don't have to worry about behavior afterwards. So the collision is much easier. And if there is a collision, I just remove it. So that's, that's the last part of the code that we didn't type in. Um, if um, I guess if, if if I were a little bit more coherent, we can do that. So anyway, so, I, so this, this, is the, uh, this is the game that we uh, didn't build. I promise you we will. We didn't. Um, the, the, the thing that after that is, is, is that you can start putting in file texture. We know how to put in file texture. You can start putting in audio effect. And I want you, you to compare the, the last one we see with this one. This is, this is the actual very, very last one. And then if you look at this and you look at the one we saw earlier on, this looks more, uh, more fun. And if you put in sound, then, then this actually, actually is indeed more fun. Um, the, the point I'm trying to make is that the last version, the one we're seeing here, and then the one that without the texture and the sound, they're identical. There's no conceptual difference whatsoever. But if you give students this assignment, they are much more motivated. They will actually spend time working on it. So. Um, I have about half an hour more. I guess, yeah, I have about half an hour more. Um, I will go through something really quickly to show you how this, this stuff is made into assignments. And then maybe we can have some discussion. And um, I apologize for this. I, I don't know what happened in the past hour or so. Maybe it was the food. I think pasta is not good for my brain. Um, I, I can usually, I, I'm usually slightly better. So anyway, so here I, want to, I just want to show you um, the, the developing a, a simple game theme application. Uh, when you de develop a simple game theme application, um, the, this is kind of a summary of what we just went through. And um, this is where, on the uh, on the second day of the workshop, where we will be organized into groups and we will write our, our own games. And then um, the goal is to implement a, a game that, like like the, like the block breaker game we have seen. Um, and, and this is how the task will be, will be, will be separate, will, will, will be divided. And whenever you develop interactive application the first time, interactive graphics application the first time, it's important to recognize the logic part from the graphics part. You want to minimize the logic. The logic is the behavior of objects in your application. You, re you really want to minimize that. And you want to maximize the graphics. So you, you want to concentrate on working on the graphics part. Um, because um, in-game AI or the, the behavior of your object, like what we have, the behavior of our objects is our, uh, is our bouncing ball. It's really straightforward. And you want to keep that. You don't want to have like um, object A is moving around and object B knows how to follow object A or object B knows how to look at object A as object A is moving around. Those things are really difficult to implement if you have never done it before. If you look at the math, it's actually not that bad. But if you've never done it before, it can be very tricky to implement. So if you want to do this in class, um, do those things last. Do the things that, that are easy to implement. Use, random, um, use randomness. 
And, and then you, what you want to do is you want to choose some kind of a game type. Now, for example, um, you want to choose, um, here we try to separate it out in three categories. Just have graphics, pictures, animation with visualization, and more interactive uh, games. Let me show you what I mean. Um, you know, graphics pictures are, are things that, you, you, so your game type will respond to user's command, and you will draw something static that's not interactive. And then um, if you want to have something with the animation or visualization, um, you can have like a ball that drops and bounces around, and you can, you can visualize random samples. So these are all graphical uh, visualization of what you would do anyway. And for interaction, what you did is after initial object set up, you will have one or multiple objects interact, and one of those will be under your user's control, your student's control. And let me show you this. Um, so for, for example, what, what you can do is you can set things up like uh, card games, or, um, or you can set things as defined board games or, or, or interactive games. So let me show you, uh, th this is a snake and ladder. And so what this is, this is a programming assignment on um, two-dimensional array. So this two-dimensional array of objects, right? And then what, what you would do is that um, you will, what, what we have done is we've developed this so that your, user, your students do not need to worry about the graphics Actually, our assertion is that you don't even need to worry about the graphics. If you use this assignment in class, this is an array of objects assignment. Um, the, all the graphics is provided for you, and all you will need to do is give the assignment. And all student needs to do is be able to reference to objects, delete objects, or create objects based on the offset that's given to you. Um, and so if, if I think if I that's, that's moving. And then if I, if I come to a goal, I, I will take the goal and, and, and so on. Um, so so this, this, this type of uh, assignment are for, for practicing, this is like a CS2 assignment. And then uh, let me show you a couple more. Um, so here is, um, you guys play Othello? So here you can, um, So now you're just playing a thorough game. I don't know how to give sound to this game. So at night, it was like 3 o'clock in the morning. I was really tired of looking for sound effect. So I go, that was me. See, that was me. Uh, and that was me, blip. I just, because I was so tired looking for effects, it's just, what the hell, I can do this myself. Um, and then there are others. And so those are like turn-based. Nothing happened in between. User press a button, you make something happen, and you stop. And then this, this type of, of assignments are slightly more difficult to implement where, um, so this is a hierarchy. Uh, this is object hierarchy where we want students to see the difference between a rock. So this is a rock. Blue, blue, blue. And those, that, those are all me. And then this is a, this is a firewalk, firework. Oh, I, that was too far. Pew. This is a firework. Boom. Pew. Blue, blue, blue. 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 So, and if you look at the behavior of the rock and the firework, they're the same. So this assignment is for students, so we give students some framework, and they have to look at the behavior of a rock, and it's actually a flyable object, and they have to implement rock and fireworks to, to, to um, and, and that's what this assignment is about. And finally, uh, let me just show you this, and maybe we can, uh, we can, we can all go. Um, this is Alphabet Hero. Um, this is, uh, uh, this is binary search tree, right? So there I have my binary search tree, and then all the flying, all the flying guys are insert a, a command. So now I'm going to come and get the, a Q insertion, and it tells me Q is duplicated. Up there it says Q is duplicated, and these guys are search commands. So I come here and touch V, V uh, found V. Now if you don't have the binary search tree behind the behind the uh, behind the game, nothing works. All the graphics and everything is there, just nothing works. But then you have binary search tree, then it works. And then in this, com in this case, what you can do is you can, I think, duplicate the tree is um, X, so I can clone the tree. So what, you, what the student needs to do is implement a cloning of a binary search tree. If it's not done correctly, then this will not show up correctly. And finally, you can balance the tree. So here I'm balancing the tree, and students need to implement all those. Right. And if you look at this assignment, when I was a student, when this assignment was given, um, I have a character screen. 
And if you type in A, they say input a character, input C, and then say print it out, you print out, you see C. It was not very satisfactory. And you can argue this is not very satisfactory either. When students use this type of assignment, they spend a lot of time making work, and then after it's working, they all get angry because they cannot improve it. You know, we, 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 we have a very tight definition so that students can't change too much, and that's by purpose. Because what the study has shown is that when you have this type of assignment in class, those two dominant students you have in class that's, that knows the world anyway, they're going to build a, a gigantic game and then show it to everyone in class. And the rest of the students in class are going to look at that and go like, I should just kill, kill myself. So what we've done is we, we provide them with this really tight interface. You can't do anything else. Implement this thing. And those good students, they get so angry in the feedback form, it really affected our score. So when we write papers, we can't lie about this stuff. So we have to say student satisfactory is not that high. And our papers don't get accepted anywhere because of it. Because students don't like it. What are you doing anyway? But then if you look at the amount of time students spend on assignment, it's gigantic. They spend so much time on the assignment, and their, their projects don't have bugs. Because when they start playing this game, if it crashes, they know. They test it really, really well. OK? Um, I, and whoever will listen, I'm not sure. I think half of the audience here really don't care about what I'm saying. But whoever will listen, I'll say it because they won't let us publish this thing. Because uh, we're, we can't show students are really excited about this thing. Um, so there's a balance somewhere. If you use this stuff, type of material to, to entice students, watch those couple of alpha students that's going to intimidate the rest of the world. Um, but then the, uh, um, if you watch too hard, students get angry, and they were really resentful. Th that's what we learned. Um, so, so in any case, so, um, and, and we went through this exercise. You, you want to draw the world, and, and then, um, so this is, these are all, all there anyway. The, the, I, I just go, I, I promise you, in, in about five minutes, we'll be all done, and I really apologize. Typically, I, I, my, 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 my presentations are of slightly better quality. Um, the, so what we have here is what I've showed you is at the very last, I give you a bunch of uh, a, a proposal on how you can do this yourself. And then what we have done is we come up with um, guidelines to kind of workbook for you. If you really want to do these things, we give you steps that you can follow. And that's what these guys are. These are steps that we are recommending what you can do if you want to do this stuff um, in, 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 your, in your class. And then here are guys to design your own assignments. And I, I won't bother with those things. Um, are there questions? <laughs> I, I feel really bad that the past hour was I should stop apologizing, but John is here. He's not going to fund me for the rest of my life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What text would you use if you were going to incorporate this and make your 161 or 162? What would fully, I use? Yeah, fully game-centric. Would you use a C-sharp? Textbook? Yeah. Yeah. textbook? Oh, I'm so, this is a, pre, a preset question. Um, the, 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 um, my view is that, and my view is the right view, is that, why is that funny? No, that it's that um, concepts in textbook are, are independent. All the textbooks are teaching the same concept. And we're trying to demonstrate that in our work, and we're not completely done yet. When we are done, um, this, this will be what we, we see. So I'm going to come here and, and show you. So here is the release of our work that's online. And um, he, it, we describe what, what we're doing and everything. He, let, let me show you there. Like I said, we have all these examples. And then here's a basic I.O. display of our screen output sequence structure and stuff like that. We are, we are all aware of this thing. We map all this example to three textbooks. We're still mapping that out. This is the first example. It maps to PLD. I'll show you what that is, C sharp for programmer, C sharp for whatever. So there are three textbooks. Same example. Right? So the idea is that if you use any of these textbooks, it doesn't matter. And if you use a textbook that's text-based, all the better. So students can see how this is presented normally, and they can see an extra example. So this material works really well if you teach your regular class in a regular way, and then just give this to students and go play with it. 
And then what happened is that in here, we have step-by-step -step guide on how we implement this stuff anyway. So what your student can do is look at this and go like, oh, this is quite a bit of reading. And then they can go like, okay, and then we show them where are the code put, and then we, we describe what's going on. And then the source code is given, so they can just compile this and run. And then if they look at the actual code, it's like three lines of code you need to change. Right? And then, so the idea is that I, I don't think you need to have a textbook for this, um, but we are fishing for publishers. Um, then, you know, we can publish stuff as textbook, and we would like to, but that's way down the line. So thank you for the question. Are there any excellent questions like that that I can show more of the work that we've done? I, I really thank you for your patience. Um, and are there any other questions? I have one for us. Please. Kelvin's being a little bit too modest. When he says his papers don't get accepted, he's actually been accepted at most of the recent conferences. So if he wanted to um, pull up his papers, they're published at CC in the foundation, the digital game and other things. Uh, 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 yeah, so we have our hits. Um, is, yeah, so so some of the the work I published, and people's reaction to this is actually quite positive. That wow, well, this is interesting. Um, so I should be careful with what I say in terms of, especially in the public. It's like no, oh, everybody hates me. I'm not sure if that's true. We may, may. Well, okay, I'll stop anyway. So thank you very much. Thank you for your patience. Thank you. <laughs> if, if I can.